and welcome back into the monastery, ladies and gentlemen. Even though this is not my usual my usual affair, because the discussing video from last time was so nice, we decided to do it twice. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra. With me is Xanatrix. I'm not going into the um, whole, the whole spiel because I want to save that for Friday. Makes sense. Um, so some of you, some of you may recall. Let's let's dial let's dial things back and have a little bit of story time with the gaming monk. So some of you may recall that when it was announced that Steamforged Games was going to be doing a official Dark Souls RPG, which makes sense. They're the ones who handled the Bloodborne card game as well as the um, Dark Souls board game. Both good games. A lot a lot of people jumped on the oh they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna adapt Dark Souls into five E. And I had said they they didn't say that they would. Wait and see. Then a bunch of people then a bunch of people decided to say that I was eating crow when they announced that yeah it would. Except that's not really eating crow because I never unlike say the cowboy bebop thing, which to be which to be fair, um, they didn't they haven't said whether they're using five e. It's just it's just that given the circumstance, I find it highly unlikely. I never said that they weren't going to use five e. I simply said that I don't I don't like the idea of jumping to conclusions so easily. Even if you jump to conclusions and are correct, that doesn't mean that it's a good course of action. Mm -hmm. Besides, if besides if I wanted to jump to the wor to the worst case scenario, I wouldn't be the monk. I'd be Razor Fist. <laughs> <sighs> or good brother Aaron. Former good brother. I can honor what he what he has. But I but I can't unlike so, unlike some of my colleagues, I can't just write something off just because it's using fifth edition's rule set. Because I've spoken. I've, first off, there's the fact that. Heavens and Heresies technically does, and we fucking love that. Yep. Um. There's also the fact that I would that I rated Anime Five E highly, as well as the fact that I ver that I do want to do some stuff with Spheres of Power and Spheres of Might. Some Fifth Edition version. The Pathfinder version is good. Is good. Is good too. But I'd have a harder time recommending that to people due to some of the quirks within Pathfinder. Yep. And keep in mind, this is Pathfinder first. This is Pathfinder first edition. So there's going. So there's going to. Even though there's a lot of interesting th things that you can do with the spheres system, um, there's the, there's going to be the risk of overwhelming. That be so. It using five E d does n um, is not the write off that one might think it is. Help. Um, Farsight, a game that a game whose whose developers I've interviewed in the past, technically uses five five E's rule set, even though they changed it from D twenty to two D twelve. But there is a lot of things that got changed. Yeah, and going back back again to Heavens and Heresies, Heavens and Heresies may use five E as a DNA. But it makes a, a bunch of significant changes while remaining a D twenty uh, system. I liken it to fantasy to comparing D and D third edition to fantasy craft. The DNA is still there, but that's where the similarities begin and end. Okay, using fantasy craft as my example might be a little bit extreme, but I think you get my point. Little extreme, and also still a good way of illustrating the differences. Mm -hmm. Sometimes extremities are the best way to do that. Yeah. And of and of course we let's not forget let's not forget how we ha how we had high hopes for level up 5e until well, you know that story. <laughs> we won't get into it. We don't need to get into it. That story is said and done. Mm -hmm. So 
I so I was I was waiting for Steamforge Games to put to put out some more info regarding their Dark Souls RPG. And first off, obviously, obviously, this is something that people have have done have done before. There's been plenty. There's been plenty of people who have taken their have taken their own interpretation. I covered one that was done by TG called Dice Souls. There's another one on Itch with that same name. Um, Rooster Emma did it, has done his own take, and there's no shortage of Dark Souls inspired TTRPGs that you can fi- that you can find. I'd, and if I need to use a, if I need to use a recent example of something Souls like inspired that I've co- that I've covered multiple instances of, um, Soulbound Dark Industrial Fantasy. Granted, it's got mo- more of Bloodborne and Monster Hunter's DNA, but the but the point still stands. Yep. And Frag Deternum from the from Wade Dyer, Mr. Frag Empire himself, that t- well, that was heavily inspired by Bloodborne as well. Um, it's just that he had to, he had to rely on Let's Plays because he doesn't have a because he doesn't have a PS4. I think well, now it. he can rely on the DMake. <laughs> she ever makes a frag deterrent second edition um i don't know i don't know if that's gonna ha- i don't know if that's gonna happen but i get the f- but um i'll check up on that in 2023 <laughs> i think i think um i think a f- i think a second edition of frag kingdom would be more likely before that of course i'm just saying <laughs> Ideas, monk. We can always toss out ideas. Yeah. So there, in the intervening time, there have been two articles that Steamforge Games had put up on their blog regarding what they plan to do with the Dark Souls RPG. Now, one of now one of them, which we're going to be discussing tonight, is there is a first look at new mechanics within it. The other one was a talk about classes. And I had thought about including it when it dropped when it dropped on my feed. The reason why I didn't is because it gave me just enough information to piss me off. Yeah, that was that one where they uh, gave you blurbs about the classes, and that's it. They gave me a they gave me the the amount of, the same amount of material that you'd find in a tweet. Yep. And I know somebody might say, "Didn't you? Didn't you give a? Bu- didn't you give a bunch of information on the class design for for FF Legend on those tweet threads?" Yeah, I did. But keyword though, threads. But keyword keyword here is threads, and and even within that, I get I those were all about giving the direction that we were planning. And even th- even then, some of- even then, some of the plans have changed from the from those initial tweets. But it's still in the same ballpark. Whereas with the with that, it was in it was in a blog post, not tweets, about character creation. So- when the blog post talks about character creation and doesn't actually tell you about how character creation works, uh, there there may be a problem. <laughs> At the very least, get, at the very least, give me a little paragraph on each class. And that's what I used to. That's what I used to do on my old blo- on my old blog. Yep. But with that in mind, let's get let's get straight into it. So of course, so they start off by saying, "Recently, we confirmed Dark Souls: The Role Playing Game is coming to pre-order February eighth, which it has. I'm not pre-ordering it. Um." It is a standalone RPG that uses the 5e engine, but it's an, i.e. the fifth edition engine of world's most popular role-playing game. I fucking hate it when people have to say that. But it's not the it's not the 5e you might be used to. Over many months and conversations that went well into the night, we cut 5e to ribbons before reanimating it by the bonfire. Cute. Dark Souls has always been close to our hearts. Our aim was to keep what felt most familiar and intuitive about the 5e system, but give it new life altogether with signature Dark Souls mechanics that would capture the authentic spirit of the video game. Without giving away the details of every new mechanic in the game, the sneak peeks below should should give you some insight into how we've brought this tabletop role-playing world to life 
or undeath. Now, before we get into that, um, Zan, I, I think we should I think we should go into what some what as as um, Soulsborne veterans that we are, what some of the pillars of trying to do a Dark Souls RPG should be. All right. Um, so one of the big pillars, I guess, uh, like the the basic gameplay loop. The one, pe- the one loop that peoples all seem to think means it's super, super hard. I'm not going to get into that particular part. Um, is you are meant to explore and experiment, building your character the way you'd like. And when you encounter failure, you're sent back to some sort of checkpoint, in this case the bonfires, mm-hmm. to try, try again. It's all about that grind of determining the best way through the challenges to suit you. Mm-hmm. Now, and we're that's... not, not going to go into the difficulty part mm-hmm. because, obviously, with a tabletop game, the level, of, the level of difficulty is going to be in the hands of the GM, i.e. too many variables for us. Yep. Not to mention... Uh, as anyone who's played enough Dark Souls can attest to, um, there are numerous different ways to massively trivialize the game, even at New Game Plus 7. Mm-hmm. Let, um, putting, as, putting, aside how many, putting aside how many times people um, backstab fish. I never really understood that. I mean, like, I understand that backstabbing is really uh, efficient in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. but, like, why why resort to just that? This is not Skyrim. You don't have to become Stealth Archer. If I'm, be- if I'm being honest, I, pre- I prefer the backstab repost setup that Inferno Plus had put up it in his mod. <laughs> yeah. Where only li- only light weapons could backstab, but heavier weapons had the option to repost. Mm-hmm. Um, so the the issue the issue with that kind of cheese is when when certain options are over useful. Um, but getting back getting back onto the rails, they the first one that they open up with is position. Saying this is mechanically the biggest change, Dark the Dark Souls RPG, to the standard 5e rule set. In Dark Souls, you have your health and you have stamina. Health measures how close you are to death, and stamina tracks the energy you you're expending on making attacks. Conserving both is essential to success. Now, 5e doesn't have anything resembling stamina, and introducing it would require an awful lot of bookkeeping for players and GMs alike. Instead, we decided to amalgamate the two into a single value. We call it position. Position measures your character health, but it's also a resource you can spend to tweak a dice roll or to use special abilities gained from your character class or equipment. Position grows up gradually as you increase in level, but it's always finite and generated randomly at the start of a battle. Using it allows you to do some pretty amazing stuff, but it also makes you vulnerable. Spending it is a big decision, and mastering its use is extremely difficult, just as it should be. I'm not 100% on this the way it's described. I, well, I mean, it is... Uh, it's a pretty vague blurb. Mm-hmm. And if if it is as written, if we just take it face value, mm-hmm. this is essentially casting from HP. And if I'm be- if I'm being on if I'm being honest, unless unless the reco- unless the recovery is a- is so- is somewhat generous the same way stamina recovery is somewhat generous in Dark Souls, somewhat being the operative word here. Fusing that fusing that with health is going to is going to create some problems. There's. There's, and because of the fact that we're dealing with a re- a casting from HP kind of resource, unless you unless you incentivize it in other ways, you're going to have the Nova problem. Yep. Also, also the whole thing of it being generated randomly. Um. Not That's, a fan of that. 
Well, and that's not true to the game either. Um, your stamina is never random. It's always based off of uh, the stats that you've increased or, or decreased, and it's always the same maximum. Your stamina draw is based off of, you know, your equipment. Mm -hmm. So that's where it varies, I guess. But even then, that's just you're spending more stamina to swing a bigger weapon or to wear heavier armor and dodge. Um, it's not, it's not good to randomize it. I don't like that. The only the only time I'd be the only time I would be willing to do any sort of randomization with this kind of thing is when you're is when you're dealing with when you're dealing with a game that has a straight up action point system that's supposed to represent the chaos of battle. And I typically see that kind of thing more often in mass combat setups, which is not Dark Souls. You can do mass combat in Dark Souls if you're good enough at the game or have a build made to cheese that type of combat but generally most players will take challenges in small bites um now with with for most most of the time um the idea the idea of fighting two enemies at once in a souls game is enough to make a good amount of people sweat exactly because it's really easy to get outmaneuvered if you're not paying attention and if you're not paying attention well you're about to die that's also I, the reason why the fight with Smog and Ornstein is considered the is considered the big damn test. Oh yeah, it is a huge skill check. Mm -hmm. uh, you you either pass or you get fucked, and people tend to get fucked for a pretty long time there. Mm -hmm. At least new players. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I. It, it the only way that you could make this amalgamate uh, resource work, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is ha you'd have to be able to somehow passively restore at least half of all spending because half of it is stamina, and stamina automatically restores on its own. Um, and then the other half would be restored by your Estus Flask. Or whatever the equivalent is going to be in this game. The, the the idea that it would would require an awful lot of bookkeeping for players and GMs that I call into question, especially especially give especially given the way the way um ca the way casting works requires a fair amount of bookkeeping as is. Whether yeah. You're, whether you're using charges or using spell points or something else. Yeah. And even more so for certain classes that have that have a sub resource. Like yeah. Say, like say, um, sorcerers. Yeah. With the uh, spell points for meta magic. Mm -hmm. I um. I think it's a good try to make a faster, fl uh, you know, flow of play. But I'm. Unless uh, until we see more, I going on just what we have alone here. I can't say it's well executed. Yeah, my my mindset right now is I have questions. Exactly. So I, I mine's mine's. I need to see more. Mm -hmm. I need to know more before I can really give a judgment. Yeah. Anyway, the next thing that they bring up is bloodied. Saying when bosses are injured, they get even more dangerous. Everyone who's played B Dark Souls knows the dread of that moment when, as a boss's health bar hits half or lower, their behavior shifts. Bloodied represents that nail-biting experience on the tabletop. When a boss is reduced to half their starting position, they gain new abilities, some of which are particularly formidable. It's not all bleak, though. Due to Bloodied, your characters will also gain few, a few little bonuses when they're suffering. It's not much, but it might keep you going that little bit longer. This is basically Bloodied from 4E. <laughs> huh you know that one game that uh feels too much like a video game uh, as the as the criticisms continue to go mm -hmm. huh huh if fourth edition feels so much like a video game and you're designing tabletop around a video game maybe that's a good thing 
with blood, um, with the concept of with the concept of bloodied or its or its similar things, this is one of those instances of I need to see the execution. I'm not. Yeah. I, I don't have as much issue with bloodied as I did with position. What I'm more cur what I'm more curious about is to see examples from the GM facing side and the player facing side. Yeah, to see what sort of a ability. Um, balance and or lack thereof there may be mm -hmm. um now i imagine that the abilities that bosses are gonna get since they are bosses and well dark soul bosses dark souls bosses are famous or infamous depending on who you talk to um for their difficulty as as we just brought up ornstein and smell um mm -hmm. uh they're likely going to get a lot of different abilities and the ways they're, I guess, executed. I hope it isn't just, like, straight numbers. I would hate that. That would actually make me just be like, this. no, please stop. My heart hurts now at that point. Mm -hmm. I hope it's, like, new ways that attacks come out. Like, like they say, when the behavior changes in the actual games, uh... Attack patterns change, attack properties change, uh, the tempo that a boss may take changes. Um, again, using Ornstein and Smell, when you down one of them, the other gets more power. Um, they generally get faster, um, and you know some of their attacks uh, change properties massively. That's what I want to see. I want to see... Okay, it had a decently threatening skill set. Now it has an entirely new threatening skill set. And you need to now learn to adjust to that new behavior. Mm -hmm. So, next is magic. The Vancey and magic system used in 5e is well known, and we hate it. Yes, we but do. But it's definitely not suitable for a Dark Souls game. So that's gone entirely. In its place is a flexible new system drawn directly from the video game to eviscerate your foes and empower your allies. A magic user has attunement slots, and each spell takes up a certain number of slots. Spells also have a specific number of casts. These spells, miracles, and pyromancies can do pretty spectacular stuff, but some require position to cast or to accentuate their effects, so using them is a delicate balance. You're not exactly dissuading me from my Nova problem critique yeah um i also don't like the fact that they uh they said that some spells on top of being charges on top of being requ charges require position that's double dipping yeah that's 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 using two resources uh i now the second part to accentuate their effects that's 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 heavens and heresies there. That's spell points used to put add secondary effects to a spell. And sometimes you can also burn some vitality to add a secondary effect or something. You know, you're not required to, but you can. Yeah, here's, here's the, here, but here's the reason why, why I don't have this issue with heavens and heresies versus in something like this. Um... With you can still you can still ca you can still cast the mm. basic the basic version without having to expend resources. Mm. With this, everything is expending resources, and some things are expending multiple resources. You're gonna have people play excessively defensive. Yeah. And granted, playing defense is a is, is an issue that cr is an issue that cropped up with the meta within um within the Souls trilogy overall and it's it's um something that i th that i think i think miyazaki talked about a few times i remember him talking about uh, wanting people to use shields less often during the development of dark souls 3 yeah yeah he um he wanted them to but he didn't remove the option because miyazaki is you know a fucking bro and understands hey some people just want to play that way but I do have I do have one particular question regarding this. Where are catalysts? 
<laughs> oh, um, that is a good question. Yeah, and calling calling the as far as calling the system flexible, um, I failed I failed to see it presently, especially especially considering that. The magic in Dark Souls, I think, I think because of because of the steps involved when it comes to catalysts and charges, has to be fire and forget. I mean, there's there's a couple of spells in Dark Souls that are not fire fire and forget. Uh, hello, soul, hello, uh, soul greatsword. Oh yeah. <laughs> and even. But yes, most most spells in the game are basically magic missile with different flavors. Yeah, to the point to the point where we have ha we have way too many varieties of soul arrow. I'm not getting into that one. <laughs> <laughs> um I think the flexibility might come from the attunement system, quote unquote, but I mean like they said that was pulled straight from the game. Yes. Casters have a specific number of attunement slots. Except you can increase your magical attunement slots on any of the classes by increasing the proper stat. This brings me to a side thing that I do want to cover. Um, this uh, the idea that you one of the big reasons why I why I was skeptical about the idea of using five e or for that matter any version of D&D for Dark Souls is due to the due to the fact that you can't do, you can't really do unless you want to really hack the shit out of it you can't really do the D20 system without classes and the Souls games are not all that interested in classes <clears throat> and I know some people are going to bring up the uh, how character creation works in them those are not classes those are starting packages yeah, you get a specific spread of stats, you get a specific set of equipment, um, you get a gift if you want it, uh, but none of it is concrete. Mm -hmm. None of it. Yes, certain packages are going to give you advantages in certain areas that make it easier to specialize into those areas. That's why they exist. But you can just as easily say, fuck all that shit, throw it out the window, and power level yourself into faith so that you can be big casty motherfucker. And I know I know some people might say, well if you use the right build you can do you can do you can um go outside of your starting package with with 5e's class system. In order to do that you have to do that you have to do something that I've I have criticized many times over the years. And that is pre-planning several levels worth of advancement just to do what you want. Mm -hmm. And while it's well, it's nice to well, it's certainly nice to have a goal. It ultimately means that the choice in leveling up is a false choice. Yeah the the way that the way that leveling actually works in Dark Souls is just. It's way too freeform compared to anything in D and D. Um, truth, truth be told, there is there is one very there is one very large, somewhat crunchy game that, even though it has a class system, might have a be might have a better shot at emulating Dark Souls. Are you gonna say what I think you're gonna say? I was gonna say against the Dark Master. Yeah. Because the classes in that are somewhat starting packages. Yeah, and with against the dark master you can you can really uh just go buck wild from the get go if you really want to. Mm -hmm. And the, I th I feel like I feel like the choice to create position ends up creating a problem with magic. Yeah. Um like a like a domino effect. Yeah, I'm. There's there's magic having its own resource system, such as spell charges, not a big deal. Mm -hmm. We actually we we see that 
in Dark Souls until they introduce the magic bar again in three. Um, <laughs> uh, where, you know, certain spells just have a certain number of charges, like any other item that you have to recharge at a bonfire later. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's fine. You could do that just fine. That would work in a lot of different tabletop systems. Um, I think the issue here is that position com- combined with the want or need to use 5e uh, really pigeonholes things. Yeah. Not a fan. I, I know I know we've built up a bit of a reputation as as shitting on 5e in some form. I want but much like much like with much like with what with what we did with Avatar Legends the thing that the thing that I want to make the thing that I want to make clear is not is just because just because so many people say that you can use 5e to do any kind of game doesn't mean that's actually true and when you're trying to when you're trying to adapt a class-based game into a classless system you're going to have you're going to have to make some adju- make some adjustments not well, everything I think is even... one size fits all yeah i think even anima beyond fantasy could do this better than D&D. and that's saying something anima <sighs> is 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 very fit into its own system and... anima is way too much of a power fantasy but i do see your point yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it could be, it would require less hacking, and it, it, it has the free flow level up style that is more suitable to a Dark Souls type TTRPG, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I, I, obviously, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's the best suitable solution. I was just saying it could do it better than D and D. Low bar, I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At the very least, I'd have an easier time with magic. God, yeah, you could build you could build all the spells custom. And say exactly what they do and how they work. Well, not just not just that, but the the um the whole thing with accumulation and Z and Zeon and projection. Yeah. But then we get to death and rebirth. Which is the fine? Which is the final segment that they have in this? There are no death saves. You hit zero position and you're dead, until you respawn by the bonfire, of course. You'll have lost all your collective souls. Yep, sorry, leveling up might take a bit longer, and there's significant risk you'll lose part of yourself. This brings us to one of the major themes in Dark Souls, the role-playing game: the gradual erosion of humanity. You begin your campaign with a character concept. Each time you die, you risk parts of yourself being whittled away, leaving you a husk, a mindless hollow. And a quick note, if during a combat half of your party dies, the whole party fails, and wakes up at a bonfire, soulless and needing to start all over again. I don't like that. This is one of those things... Now, the death and rebirth thing is one of... If I'm being honest, is one thing that I probably wouldn't do in my own campaigns, largely, at least not not in the mechanical sense. Largely, be, largely because of the fact that it's one of those things that doesn't translate into tabletop form. Yeah, especially you know, losing losing level progress. Uh all progress towards a your next purchase of whatever level you're going to have. Um, yeah, because people love negative levels back in 3. Fuck you. <laughs> no, legitimately fuck you. Oh, what? Eat shit. Yeah, and let, let's not get into the whole you have to spend experience for magic item creation. Or maybe like with the whole spend experience to cast wish. Yeah, but I had Wish banned whenever I DM'd. Regardless of our of our feelings about how fucked Wish is as a spell, the fact that you also had to spend fucking experience to cast it was goddamn stupid. I hated it. Now, if I'm be if I'm being honest, if I if if 
it is absolutely necessary to have a lose part of lose part of yourself. Um, I would much rather I would much rather have that be a kind of a kind of um checklist of me of memories. Take a little page out of Nibiru. Mm -hmm. Um, each time each time each time you would die, you'd lo you'd lose one of those. Unless you, you can find a, a vaunted humanity item. Mm -hmm. And restore your memories. Yeah. I mean, with with that, you have you have the ro you have op you have options for role playing, especially if if um, events happen that you should remember but you don't. Yep. And you and you have a ta you have a tangible ticking clock when it comes to your, when it comes to it, because I get the feeling that the approach that they're going to do is humanity is a number. Which works for a video game, but not for a TTRPG. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm. No, I'm not sorry to say it. Uh, I, I just <sighs> humanity as a concept in the Dark Souls video games is something you explore not by collecting and using it and getting your humanity number up. Yes, that gives you benefits such as finding better items, etc. Um. And keeps you from looking hollow. But there's stories behind why humanity is the way it is and the decay of everything. And you find that through item descriptions, place descriptors, people you find and interact with and uh, carry all the way to the end of their stories. All of those things of those natures. Uh, Dark Souls storytelling is environmental in the extreme. Mm -hmm. Um very well done too sure early on vati vidya was just throwing out tons of theories until he did more of his own exploring and was like no that theory doesn't work anymore and here's the actual lore mm -hmm. and now he's kind of made himself professional at it uh quite li quite literally <laughs> given that book yeah <laughs> which i want but humanity as a concept within the game is much deeper than just a number and to evoke that within a ttrpg it has to be narratively tied um which is why treating humanity as just a number would be a disservice mm -hmm. i would s and of course, I don't know. I don't know if humanity is going to be is going to be utilized as a number, but given everything, it, cer it certainly seems that way. But humanity is is the sand meter of of Dark Souls. <laughs> <laughs> that that'd be the that'd be the worst case scenario. I know, and that's why I said it because I know that you and I both know that we can imagine the worst. Mm -hmm. And to be. F I should also note that among the many fan projects, there was one person who did do, who did do a um a fi a five e take on Dark Souls. I think I still I think I still have that document, um somewhere in my big ass library. Um, let me. S oh yeah, here. Oh yeah, here it is. I mean, it's not, it wasn't it wasn't exa it wasn't exactly f um finished but it but it was cer it was certainly a step forward and also based on how they describe the whole thing with souls um why do I why do I get the feeling they're going to reflavor souls as experience points um I don't actually think they can do that because souls isn't just uh isn't just experience in the actual games it's also your currency mm -hmm. so i think they're gonna have to it's going to have to be a uh a specific like not just experience but it's gonna have to be uh something you can spend otherwise as well yeah and I'm looking. Th I'm looking through the way that through the way that he that um the developer of that di of that did it. Mm. And 
he mainly he mainly did it as a um at, and I'm I'm looking at it right now when you <clears throat> over his rules for hollowing um when you when you rise after death make a DC 10 wisdom saving throw on a failed save you gain one long term madness effect when the effect would end you must repeat the saving throw on a failed save it persists for another d10 times 10 hours if you fail the initial save by five or more you gain one indefinite madness effect the dc of this save increases by one each time you die he's referencing the madness effects that were in the dm's guide mm -hmm. uh, so death the way hollowing works in in his particular 5e hack of dark souls is you just go insane yeah I mean, better than it as a number? Mm -hmm. Question mark. I wouldn't exactly call it. I wouldn't exactly call it ideal. And th and this is. I've had I've had this particular document for a few years. I think the mm. last time this was modified was 2015. There, so. Whether or not whether or not it's uh, whether or not this particular version is out of date, I can't say. And if I go looking for it, I might not even find the same version. I might find somebody else's take. <clears throat> True. Because I doubt th I doubt that there's just one person who's tried to do Dark Souls meets Five E in the in in the in, in the intervening seven years. Yeah, but I'd rather see. Dark Souls meets something else because, again, D and D, D no, nah, just does not cut what you need for this type of game. I think in th in theory you could, in theory you could utilize a very stripped down version of the D twenty system to do it. However, I'm of the I'm of the mindset that I think I think their take isn't going as far as it need as it needs to. They didn't cut it down enough. No. Yeah. This, need, I, this needs a this needs a full on bl blow everything up fr and start from literal scratch. Yeah, you need heavens and heresies level treatment. Mm -hmm. I'm not even I'm not even saying I'd use the set the setup for heavens that heavens and heresies does, but it's at it as at it's at the very least a step in the proper direction. Well, and I, I'm not saying use heavens and heresies as the base. I'm saying the same treatment. Tanner gave 5e when he was making Heavens and Heresies. Mm -hmm. Just cut away everything that doesn't work, add what you need um, as you go, and tweak continuously. Yeah, the I'd say the the other thing that I would pro the other thing that I'd probably um, I'd probably change if I if I was handling this myself, and I'm not going to because I'm already I'm already balls deep in a in a whole other project. Plus, th plus, there's plenty of people who've already d who've already done it better than I will. Balls it's... deep in another project in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> hey, hey, you're you're the one who walked into that one. If Shades is here, he'd press the sideshow Bob button for you. Yeah, I'd do it myself if my soundboard actually worked. <laughs> but the po but the point is. I would I would I would vastly expand how ability scores work. Well, you'd have to. Um I'd probably I'd probably treat ability scores the way the way that they're the way that they're treated in 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 um in a lot of the, a lot of those er, a lot of those early TSR um D100 games. Okay, I could I could see that. I mean, and of course, you actually have to have more ability scores than base D and D has, because of the way the scores actually work in the game. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, I, again, yes, could it be done in D and D with a lot of work? Yes, but I think that gets at the crux of the issue. You'd have to with hack a so lot of be work. A whole other game. Yes, with with a lot of work. The, this this boils down to the thing we always say: D and D can be used to make any game with enough hacking. Sure, but 
You can say at that, that point, about any game. Exactly! Enough homebrew turns any game into whatever game you want it to be. Does that mean it's the game you started with? Hell to the fuck no. Rollmaster started Rollmaster started out as an AD&D hack before they decided fuck it, let's just do our own thing. Same with Exactly. Same with um chivalry and sorcery. And both of those games are as far are as far removed from D&D's setup as you could get. Even AD&D setup they're as far removed as you could get. Yeah, there's there's a better if you didn't want to go creating your own from the ground up DTRPG system for Dark Souls, which honestly, I think that's probably the best path to make a really good Dark Souls TTRPG, but I digress. Mm -hmm. Not all developers have that sort of time, especially when it's a license and you're put on a timetable. I, um, I, I honestly, I honestly have to wonder why that why they didn't just why they didn't just utilize some of the aspects from the board game. That would have worked, yeah. And um, just just, just take some of that and expand and expand upon it. But like, like you already pointed out, there's there's a better system out there for this that you, you named right off the top of your head. That was there was no no real no real need to make it a brain scratcher. Mm -hmm. Um, and and. I'm sure if we did want to make it a brain scratcher, we could come up with multiple systems that suit the Dark Souls feel and the Dark Souls uh, gameplay better. That you could just build off of as you need. But they went with 5e, and I, I'm honestly confused as to why. So with, with that said, will will I cover this? Will I cover the Dark Souls role playing game on a Valley of the Judged? At this point, at this point in time, the answer is no. Would I cover it in a Gaming Monk reviews? I ha I do not see myself putting putting down the requisite amount of money for this. If I get if I get sent the PDF, maybe I'd consider it because then I'm because then I'm doing it as a favor for one of our dear. Um, viewers, but beyond that, but beyond that, I'd find it. F I would find it far more interesting to discuss the fan projects that have tackled this than the quote-unquote official work. It's it's just like the thing with Avatar Legends, people. The fan works out there are way cooler to look at. Mm -hmm. And. Mm. Down the, I'm not. We're not going to be doing it anytime soon. But down the road, we may consider doing a grab bag version of Valley of the Judge, looking at a handful of them. Hey, I, <laughs> I'm willing. I, you know me, Monk. I like reviewing good games. <clears throat> it won't. It obviously wouldn't be as detailed as what we're currently doing with Veil vale of the Void. It would just be. It would. Just, it would be again a grab bag. And it wouldn't even be all of the ones that I have because that because I um I have no plans on doing a twenty four hour episode anytime soon. A twenty four hour live stream. <laughs> Go watch the VOD. Of course that's if you can get all your technical issues <laughs> fixed. Yeah. That's not happening. <laughs> so all I can all I can say for right now is this is a hard pass. I will I will keep an eye out on 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 some of the further details with position. Now, if now here's here's a question that I'd, I'd pose for you, Zan. If in the next com in the next few months they put out a quick start PDF with so, with some more detail on some of the mechanics, do you think do you think that is valley worthy? A valley one shot, yeah. Much like the other quick start guides we've looked at, uh, we could definitely dig in, take a bite out of it, and see, you know, exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we'll find some genius. Maybe we'll find some disappointment. I expect the latter, but that's just me when it comes to anything D&D. &D. Or maybe we'll find the Power Rangers RPG. 
Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. For those of you who haven't watched that Geek Watch episode, if you want to watch a game, make it so that I can't speak anymore. Go watch it. Just remember, <clears throat> I got. Just remember when I got sent it, I got so pissed off I wrote a script. The monks, the monk got logaria. I became apoplectic. Mm -hmm. Let's just let's just put it that way. Yeah. But <sighs> for but for the time being. That that'll do it for this little discussion, and we will see we will see you all again down the down the road. Um, Veil of the Void is coming on Friday, and I'm looking forward to handling our first outright offensive class. Ali ho! Um, and see and seeing how long it takes before we make a two fort reference, probably won't take long. Uh. <laughs> And of course, I've got some other surprises here and there in the coming days. So, as Yoshi P would say, please look forward to it. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody.